The thread I'm going to be using is a uni thread, 8 fire orange. Something in the start, just below the eye. I come down a good half a dozen tons or more. And then tie in a small, in this case it's a gold oval tinsel. Now just, just tie it on the top. And wind it down nice and, nice and tight. Now I would take it to basically between point of the, the hook and the salar and the barb and then I usually put three in this size about three turns down three and then bring the double tinsel between now you're not going to use a, this isn't the, the no, no rib on this fly but there is a tag of two colours so I'm going to cut this the full length of that the tag the two colours actually and the colours I'm going to use of Chinese or the Uniflos, in this case Chinese red and they call hot green which is a kind of lime green. And what I do is I uh, take a strand out and I'll just show you what you can do. In this size of fly just it's too heavy so if you twist it you'll see it splits into two so you'll need a single strand and I've already got one ready. First up is the, the red. And the easiest way to do it is to catch in with a short tail and with the main part of the floss facing towards the eye of the hook. Just wind down and then come back halfway. And then what I like to do is wind down and then come back up. Catch it in at that halfway point. Bring over your tail, which will basically stop the floss getting drawn round. I've pulled off, nice and tight. Come back up. We trim this the length of the body. Just leave it there. Get the green. Do the same. Just catch it. Come down to the point where you want the green to start. And then back up. And work your green down. It's nice and tight. Cross your thread, bring over your small tail. Again, as I say, it protects. Or stops the floss getting pulled off. And then simply trim out the full length of the, the body. It's just a wee short body on this. Got a lot on it. Now what I like to do at this point is tidy up. Just take a thread up. And then come back down. And then this you can square up the end here or just simply taking your thread to a point where you're going to tie in the tail. And the tail is just a golden pheasant crest. It's one of the smaller ones here. Now, I've basically dyed this sunburst, so it's slightly stronger, it's a stronger yellow. Tail, uh, body length, or at least the body length anyway, just tie it on top. You see, it's slightly stronger in colour, and if it's just a wee tad long, you can always pull it in. I prefer to pull it in anyway because what happens is it starts to pull the fibres into the point where you want it. Let's have a look. A wee bit more. There we are. Again, trim that to pull into the body. And then, again, I like to tidy up. And back down. Now for the, the body, I'm just using an emerald green light bright. Or some would say Kelly Green, Angel Hair or whatever, some that's a colour. It's a metallic green. And 
and then form your body with it. There's been a few different types of colours used in this fly, so I would have to say this is probably a variant because I'm not 100% sure the material it was used. This is the colour I've been using, so there we are. A hackle. I'm just going to use a hen hackle. This is a Chinese hen dyed black. Fibre length is. It's really. It's up to yourself again. It can be. If you look at. If you pull it out towards the. Between the point and the barb. Or even if you want it shorter. It's up to yourself. And again, another thing you can do is you can either tie your wing in first and then put your hackle in front. Which is a good method, so I tie that, do that quite a lot. But I'm just going to tie this normal, meaning with the hackle first and then the wing. You see, I tied it in by the tip, folded it back, and then I'm going to do a turn in front of the other. Do you happy? Let me see. Looks okay. For a ninth degree bend into the hackle, and then tighten down. And then trim away the excess. Just at this point, you can see how your hackle's sitting. Fold anything going forward, just pull it back. Just got a wee bit of wax on there just to make it slightly tighter. And that looks fine. Now, what I'm going to do here is I've got the same emerald green, but in the hank form. You need some maybe three fibre lengths, and what I'm going to do is sort of tie it on, go down, fold it back, and then come in with my scissors and basically just cut it in different lengths. You'll find it looks much better if you do that. Just look at what the lengths are. If they are a tad too long, you can always cut one away, but leave it at this point. Now the hair for the wing is, again, it's up to yourself. It could be, for the bigger flies, I've used bucktail, smaller flies. In this case, I'm going to use some, this is dyed black fox. Uh, very soft, mobile. Or you can use Russian squirrel, which is very good. I say it's up to you, as long as it's black hair. And it's, it suits the water that you're fishing. Length, you can have it again, you can quite short, long, depending again, some style, some people like a nice long wing. If it's standard, then you're looking just towards, just or just by the tail length, right there. And once you're happy, you just come in. Come in a few turns, nice and tight. Lift it up, cut in, and trim away. So I like to wax the thread at this point, secure it in. This will help if you've got a small brush. You just brush the hair so it sits. Just give you an idea. And then two small jungle cork eyes. away from the cape and then I usually like to put them on both at the same time so line them up hold the tips and draw back the fibers you don't want and then come in time on the sides come around with a couple of loose turns get the position of the eyes that you want this point you can make them longer you can see there, it looks okay. Now we fold them back, so we go down two or three turns and then come back up. Now it does pay again to put a wee drop of wax on your thread, give you that extra grip, and basically gives you a lot more confidence to put tight turns in. Now you can trim these away, or see if I usually break them off. Sometimes they don't, so just cut them away and then come in with finish. Now I'm going to use the brighten the head 
Not that it's not bright at the moment, but I'm going to use a glow bright floss number four to give it a really bright red head. I've got one here on a, a bobbin holder. Again, what I like to do is run the, the wax through it. What the wax does, it just makes it much easier to wind on. Start to die. Stops it spreading a wee bit, and as you come up, maybe a turn or so from the, the wing, trim away the waist, come in, and straight in and work finish, just that tidies it up. You only need a couple of turns, you don't need much more than that. Nice and tight. Now, what I normally do is get around with my, my nail, just any wax, extra wax, I like to just rub it away. First coat, as I always usually do, is put super glue. It's a very fine coat. All the way around. Just take your time. And allow that to dry. You see it's really bright, brightens the head up. And then what I do is a single coat of varnish. And or oh, two coats if you want. And then that's it done. Ideal. And that there's your it's, it's a variant of what they call a fly called the Undertaker. So they call this one the Overtaker. So I hope you enjoy that. As I say, that's your overtaker.